So you know how sometimes you have like a really, really incredible idea or you think it's incredible or you figure out how to do something cool and before you check to see if maybe there's a better idea or really just do any kind of thinking whatsoever, you've already implemented that idea and then it turns out a little while later that there was just a way, way simpler and easier way to do things. That's, uh, that's what's going on here. So if we take a look at the most recent iteration of this Max setup script, the main thing that we did differently, as opposed to the other scripts, was we were implementing uh, a way to install our custom like dot file configurations for Z shell and uh, Vim mainly. Uh, there were a few other apps and there will be more that I add later, uh, but those were the main two that we were looking at. And the way that we did that is I was using this echo program to append text to a new file. And that's a really cool thing that echo can do. It was just that I had gotten so excited about figuring out that functionality that I didn't really put a ton of thought into whether or not maybe there was an easier way to do this. Uh, and it turns out there 100% is. So we can actually start this video off by doing a whole lot of deleting. We'll just kind of let's see here. We'll probably delete all of this. We can definitely delete all of these. We can definitely delete all of that. D. And we can probably even delete that and that. And we can also delete this. Okay. All right. So now we're kind of back to where we were before the beginning of the last video, which there'll be links and cards and things. So if you aren't familiar with the series, you can definitely check it out. But our goal today is to find a way to include the installation of our VimRC and our Z profile in this one installation script so that we can push one button and have everything set up same principle as before. Uh, before we can do this, let's take a look at GitHub. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to my uh, page here. And you can see I've got a couple of uh, repositories that you can take a look at. Firstly, there's, you know, just my website. And then there is, of course, this Mac setup script, which, of course, there'll be a link in the description if you're interested in following the progress there. That's pretty cool. But I also have another repository with all of the actual dot files that I want to include I have one for my vimrc and my z profile and the z shell rc and all of those types of things so what we want to do instead of writing out every line of these configuration files and then appending it to a file which is just wildly inefficient and terrible is we want to find a way to actually use these files that are already in their own git repository and just install them so that's actually pretty easy you can just as long as you have git installed on your computer which if you don't you can just do brew install git or you know use any other package manager if you're watching this and you're not using a mac but once you have git you can just do git clone and then paste in that link for the repository. It's pretty simple. Uh, the only issue is that rather than pasting all of these files into our working directory where we might want them, it actually creates a folder for all of these files and drops them in there. If we take a look here, now we have all of these files that were in that repository. Uh, and we could go through and move all of these files or copy all of these files over to our home directory. But the problem is that would kind of break the Git repository functionality and everything. So it's easier if we do something a little bit different. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've actually put uh, this repository in its own folder right here on my system slash repo slash uh, not slash that slash dot profiles. Uh, and this is its own custom kind of folder. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and just add all of that. Commit this M and plug made changes. Okay, push those. But once again, if we list all this, we have all of the files that we would need to get access to. But if we take a look in our home directory, even though we have the actual VimRC file in this different directory, if I go into my home directory and I try to open up my VimRC file, it's still there or it's not really, but we can still access it from our home directory. And more importantly, Vim can still access it from our home directory. So how do we get this set up? I'm gonna go ahead and go back into our uh, script that we're working on here. And we'll go ahead and pop down a new line. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at a command called ln or link. If we open up the man page here, you can see this is just a program utility that is going to create an alias to a file in different directories and it's gonna do it in a really smart way so that it's as if the file is actually there. But if we were to open up the finder 
and make sure that we're showing hidden files here. So you can see here, if we take a look at our .vim folder or our .vimrc, if we get some info about these, you can see that these are actually just alias files. So essentially they're just a shortcut to a different file, which of course is being stored in the actual directory repo slash dot profile. So that's what we're gonna be using to make this happen. Uh, the first step of course is to actually clone that repository into its new home, however. Uh, so we just want to make sure that we are in the right directory. So I'm going to do cd slash repo. And then we're going to do git clone. And we'll copy that link again. Maybe we will. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a new thing here so we can see what's going on. Uh, I'll just navigate to that uh, repo slash dot profiles thing. And then list all the files so we can see what we want to add. So obviously we want to add the Z profile. We'll focus on just adding the VimRC and the Z profile for now. So the way that this program works is we'll type in LN to, you know, say we're creating a link and we need to give it the option dash S. And then all we have to do is type in the actual location of the file, the original file that is. So in this case, it's repo slash dot profiles slash we'll say the Z shell RC. And then we add a space and then add the location of where we want to add the file, which of course in this case, case is just our home directory. And then all we have to do is go through and update this for all the files that we need to be adding to our home directory. So, uh, you know, we're also going to want the, um, the vimrc file and we'll also most likely want the actual dot vim directory. So we'll make sure we add that as well. And then we'll also probably want the, um, the z profile file. So we'll add that and there we have it. And now if we save these changes, what's gonna happen is we're gonna be setting up alias files in our home directory that will then reference the files that are in the actual directory that's being tracked by Git. We can edit these files on any system. We can use them on any system. And actually something interesting is that this part of the script, the bit that I've actually copied here for us to work with today, should actually work on any Unix based system. Uh, it's not exclusive to Macs, so it'll work on BSD or anything that runs the Linux kernel, uh, you know, or maybe Solaris or whatever else you may be using. Now, one other thing that I did want to do since we're updating this is I want to actually take a look at that update script that we set up a few videos ago. We should actually be able to do, whoops, that's the wrong one, uh, the upgrade date script. We're also going to be able to add in a way to update all of these directories using our Git repository really quickly. Um, so if you take a look here, all we have to do is change directories into wherever we're storing our dot files and then just run git pull. And this will check for any changes in the Git repository and update your current Git directory to those changes so that it has the most recent updates. But uh, that is actually about it for this video. Thank you everyone for uh, checking it out and I will see you in the next one.